Hello, welcome to Sound and Fury Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of The Ravening by Daniel Church. This is a book from Angry Robot coming out September 24th, 2024. It's a horror novel. I received this arc from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. I also received it from Angry Robot because I think I applied to get a copy of it and they sent me the NetGalley link instead. So thank you, uh, Angry Robot, for that. <laughs> Creepy and intriguing, The Ravening is more action thriller at times than horror, but it is a lot of fun. What is it about? Jenna's life has always been a fight. From the traumatic and mysterious loss of her mother on a dark woodland road when she was 15, to the abusive and controlling boyfriend she's recently escaped, she has learned that trust hurts you in the end. Now Jenna's found what she hopes is happiness with her new girlfriend, Holly. But the world is full of darkness, some of it ancient, some of it closer to home. Evil and those who serve it will not let Jenna go. The Ravening is a gripping claustrophobic horror that sets a timeless nightmare against one woman and her belief in herself and the possibility that somewhere, somehow, there's love in the world. <laughs> Very small blurb, <laughs> which I prefer. So this book, hmm, um, I thought it was good, but in comparison, I thought The Hollows was excellent. <laughs> I enjoyed The Ravening and was intrigued by the mystery aspect of it, but it felt a little longer than it needed to be at, as some parts dragged, and I'm also not fond of a certain plot point related to human evil versus the supernatural, and by not fond, I mean I find it frustrating more than scary or exciting. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what it is because it happens pretty early in the story. There is a forced pregnancy slash kidnapping element to this novel. There is no sexualized violence, aside from stealthing, which is told in passing. If you find forced pregnancy icky, you might want to avoid it. The thing about this book that keeps it as like a solid 3.5 for me was that it's just not that memorable. <laughs> I think this ties back to it being too long. There are parts to it that just feel like they could have been trimmed. The story essentially repeats itself plot-wise at one point, which I think we could have done without. And there is a sort of like Silent Hill alternate reality land that I wasn't quite into. I'm never fond of when movies or books have someone going into some sort of like a liminal space or a dream realm or whatever to deal with the issues kind of that way. It happens quite a bit, so I'm just a little tired of that trope. I think this might be my issue with the book. There's just a lot of tropes that I'm just not into. I'm just trying to explain that this is a subjective thing, not so much like a writing or a narrative thing. I think a lot of people will really enjoy this book. It's just there's certain things that just don't push my buttons. <laughs> The book, though, starts off very, very strong. The monster in it is intriguing and creepy, and the parts of the book that are horror are actually scary. There's just too much kind of action thriller for me versus, like, actual horror. His last book, The Hollows, which I mentioned already, was a horror with a few scenes of shootout action, which was cool, but this was mainly action thriller with some scenes of horror. I think I got thrown off as the book starts as a straight-up horror, but it doesn't really keep that momentum. I also wasn't as drawn to the characters as I could have been. I understood and did like Jenna, the main character, as she was resolute and never stopped fighting back. I wanted a happy ending for her, <laughs> but Holly wasn't fleshed out enough for me to understand why she cared so much for Jenna, who is, by her own admission, quite abrasive. The villains are far too many and didn't get enough page time, so I could have used more time with them to make them more threatening than they were. The monster thing, the bone walker, was interesting up until the climax. I didn't find the reveal overly surprising because there are many chapters here and there basically explaining the premise as you go. Perhaps had the history been, you know, perhaps had the story been half the bone walker's story and the other half Jenna's, it might have worked a bit better. Actually, that might have been kind of cool, but oh well. What what I really liked about the book was the approach to bodily autonomy, actually. As someone who is very pro-choice and has been pregnant three times, yes, I only have two kids, so obviously I had a miscarriage once, these aspects of the story I thought were approached in a realistic and thoughtful way that I very much appreciated. I'm very happy to see these male authors writing about women's issues and clearly doing their research, so that was great. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> As I said, it is a solid, entertaining book, but I can't say that I loved it. But will I read another one of Church's? Of course I will. I absolutely love The Hollows. <laughs> so yeah, I think if you aren't afraid of the pregnancy kidnapping trope, uh, if you are intrigued by the bone walker, uh, and if you like kind of action thriller horror, I think you will really, really like this. It's just those things aren't really my jam. But I do appreciate the arc from Angry Robot. <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs>